Hello and welcome back to another episode of Rich on Life Lofts. I am Richard and today we're going over my loft management software that I use. Now uh, before I get started I want to let you know that I went out early this morning and I captured the liberation of Nashville Pigeon Racing Club's 200 mile young bird race both A and B. I'm going to put that video at the end of this one. Now I checked out three different loft management programs before I before I picked Pigeon Planner. I picked Pigeon Planner because it was the, for me the easiest to use and had the, the features that I felt I would use the most. The other two were good. I they just had different features that I wasn't going to use. Now before I get started, will you please click the like button and leave me a comment? Tell me where you're from and if you use Pigeon Planner or a different program to manage your loft. Or are you a spiral notebook type of person, just like I was before I got this? Now, your comments really help the channel a lot. When you open the, the program, you'll see that you can have separate databases to cover different lofts or different things that you wanted to cover. If you had a young bird loft or a breeding loft, I'm combining my breeding loft and flying loft into the same database because I don't have that many birds and it's easier for me to track. If you have a lot of birds and in different lofts, it might be easier to use them in different databases. Uh, once you open the program, you'll be presented with a list of all of your birds. The columns at the top are configurable. Well, I don't, they're not really configurable, but you can remove them or add them depending on uh, what you want to see. You know, if you don't want to see the strain, you can remove the strain. It is very easy to add a new bird to this program. You just click the plus sign and it's, you'll be presented with a pop-up for the details of the new, new edition. All of the drop-down fields are configurable. Just pick a selection or add a new one, and once you add it, it'll always be there. Uh, like if I'm adding a bird here, I can pick, uh, let's see here, I can pick green, and it'll, all, it'll always be there. Uh, here you have the choice of the sex, you can pick, uh, you know, cock, hen, young bird, or, you know, if it's still a very young bird, you don't know. Uh, so let's go ahead and make one here. Since I'm making all of this up, I'll be deleting this bird uh, when I'm done. Uh, you could add the strain, you know, if you if you know the strains and you're tracking if it's a Jansen or a Hubert or whatever you want, you can pick the strain of the bird, and then you can pick the loft. Now, I'm still debating on how I'm going to use this loft. Uh, if I want to put it in my loft, I uh, see, you know, uh, Brack's loft here. I got a couple of birds from Jack and I had him here. I got a couple of birds from Kenneth. So I got flyers for Jimmy on here. So I really don't know how I want to use this. Uh, right now, I just have the loft the bird came from and all the young birds, I have them in my, you know, breeding loft or flying loft. Uh, here you can put in the ring numbers of your uh, the siren dam off the pedigree if you have it and you can add any extra info you have down there like where you got it the phone number or anything else that you want to put in here that's you know for your uh, personal use then you can add the ring number of this particular bird uh, you can name it if you want to uh, I named some of mine and then you can pick the status for is it act is it active? Oh come on, stay up. Is it dead? Sold? Lost? You know, is it a breeder? Did you loan it to somebody? You know, is is it a widow? Did it lose its mate? You're gonna have to you know claim it to something else. Uh, whatever you want here, and so you can make it active, and then you can also put a picture of the bird in here. And actually, I think you can put a couple of pictures, and then once you hit save, nope, oh, I messed that up. So let me go ahead and add an R there. Huh. I was just going to make I was going to make something up and it, and it wouldn't allow me. So let's save that. Uh, oh, it won't let me save it. Be that you need a, an actual ring number to to have a bird. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel that. It doesn't matter. So next on here, once you get all that in there, then your bird will be added to your loft. Now. 
Right now I have it set for all of my, my birds that I have in the loft. If you want to go to the view and show all pigeons, it'll show you the ones that have, uh, this one's dead. I think 106 is one of the ones that got eaten by the, or killed by the snake. Uh, this one is lost. Uh, I think this one died in the nest right after I banded it. So yeah, so it keeps all the birds here. As you can see right now, it says total of 57. And if I go back to take all pigeons off, you see it drops back to 51, you know, live pigeons. Now what I'm using this uh, the most for is going to be for breeding. You click on, if you highlight a bird up here, let's highlight like 87. You highlight a bird up here and click on the breeding tab, you'll see that you have uh, 87 and 83 uh, had three rounds. Uh, the first one was in December of uh, last year. I put them together on the 17th is when I uh, put them together in the nest box. Uh, they laid two eggs, one on the 24th and one on the 25th, and uh, only one hatched on the 17th. And that's when I banded with my Rich on Life band uh, 100. That's where my band started. And so this tracks where this bird is from. Now, when you go in here, like if you're mating up new birds, and let's go down here to some of my young birds that won't have anything in here. So let's say Rich on Life 105. I can add a breeding record for this bird that I have it highlighted in the grid. So you can pick the date they were put together. And then you can pick its mate. Who did you mate it up with? Now, this is going to show me right now a bunch of the available birds. Uh, it, because it's a young bird, so it doesn't know. So these are all the birds that I have that aren't don't have a breeding record left. Now, if this was marked as a hen, it would only show me cocks over here, and vice versa. If this was marked as a cock, it would only show me the hens over here. But right now, it's showing me all the, either the young birds or the ones that we don't know. So I'm going to go ahead and let's just pick, oh, let's pick Carl. So now, these two have a record, and you can enter the series. Either, I'm going to use this for the rounds, either one, two, three, or four and what nest box they're in. Right now I have 10 nest boxes. Uh, six of them have numbers and four of them have colors. So let's just say ne nest box two. And you can put a comment in here on why you put them together or what they, how they, you know, uh, any information you need. Uh, then you can track the days that the eggs were laid in each one of these, if they laid two or if just only one, and then the date the eggs were hatched. You know, I'm just putting bogus information in here. Now, as, if I click successful, that it was a hatch successful and everything, and I click successful, then I can en enter a band. I don't think the program actually considers it successful until it gets to, you know, eight, nine days where you can band a bird, and then you can put it into band. Now, you can leave this in here as long as you want until you pick on the add pigeon icon. As soon as you add pigeon icon and click save, it will add the bird to your main roster. Until you do that, this bird will not be in this main roster. And another good thing about this program, it automatically tracks all of the bird's relatives. So if I click on the relative tab and I have uh, 105 selected, then you can see that these are the other uh, brothers and sisters. It'll also keep track of half-brothers and sisters and any of its offspring as it goes down. Like, uh, I believe uh, 105, I don't know where 105 came from. Uh, maybe, yeah, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not quite sure what one, which ones 105's brothers and sisters were right now. But as you go up and down, you can see their offspring changes on which one goes where. And if you come up to the top where my older birds are, my older breeding birds, it'll show you their offspring uh, that I actually made, you know, had made. These are their offspring. And now if I were to pair these birds with other ones, it would come back and give you the half-brothers and sisters when you pick the, uh, the younger birds. 
Now, I really need this because most of my birds are white. And I mean, I know I'm gonna breed a lot of the white out of them as I'm mixing them up with my uh, the black hand and a couple of my uh, dark checks. But until then, it gets really hard to tell them apart. I can understand if you had 30 blue bars, that it'd be hard, you know, tell which ones are part or remember which ones came from where. So those are the main two features I'm going to be using this year. And also uh, there's a results tab, even though I'm not racing yet. Uh, you can go to your results tab once you highlight a bird here, and then you can add any of its race information. If you come over here and click add, you'll get a list and most of this information will be contained on the sheet you get back from your race secretary. Uh, you can pick, uh, this also has a, a way to track race points. Uh, right now I only have two rape race points in here where we take the, for the first club training toss, which is on the Alabama, Tennessee border. And then of my loft, you have to have your loft GPS coordinates in here for it to work. Uh, you can pick your weather and same thing here. As you notice, I got partly cloudy in here. If it's not in your drop down and you were to put sunny in here, uh, next time you go pick, oh, it won't be that's on this one. But if I was to pick partly cloudy and then come down, when I save this, it will save it to the list. So next time I come in here, sunny will be in here. Uh, put in temperature, you can put in the wind speed, north, northwest. Uh, then when you get your results back, you know, where it placed, if it placed, you know, 25th out of 200. You know, you can put all that in there. You can put the speeds in here. And I don't really know what to use for sector and category. Uh, you know, I'll probably leave those pretty blank. And down here, I'll probably just put the, what we what we name our races. Uh, you know, because we have the, the city names or the exits that they have the, the names. You know, or, or I can just call it, you know, Nashville Pigeon Racing Clubs, 200 Mile Youngbird. So... And there's, a, like I said, there's a bunch of uh, different features in this video, but those are the ones I wanted to highlight to keep it uh, concise and not two hours long. So if you have any questions, please let me know. Uh, the Pigeon Planner is a free program. I'm going to put a link down in the description on where you can download it. And uh, let me know if you enjoyed this video. And now I'm going to show you a pictures of the Young Bird Liberation. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you on the next one. Hey, this is the Nashville Racing Pigeons. Our A release. I drove down to watch it. I have no birds flying today, but oop, we've got some starters. Terry's going to go ahead and start. He's the uh, official driver and release liberation person he's got his uh, phone in his hand there you go and there goes the a birds nice group got two groups going Getting their bearings. This is a 200 mile race for the National Racing Pigeon Club. Nope. They're over there. Some are breaking off. Some are, I guess they'll all figure it out. And I'll be back for the B release. to release the bee birds <coughs> I don't know what I said in the first video but this is a 200 mile race so Terry's unlocking the trailer let the bee birds out hopefully I can get a pretty good shot of it he's watching his stopwatch right now to make sure he lets them go there they go Oh, 
looks like we got one or two hanging out in there. I lost them. There they go. The A group hung around for a little while. They made quite a few circles. You got some stragglers in there. 